And so as somebody looked at as somebody who's like kind of like, oh, he's kind of chunky or bigger. Like I can, I can remember like uh, my dad messing with me because like there was this girl he was trying to put me on that was like his associate's daughter or whatever. And she was like, this is like the trauma coming out. She was like, no, I don't like him. You know, he kind of reminds me of a buttermilk biscuit. Are you going to laugh? But I'm just saying, (laughs) but it wasn't funny at the time. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just like, (laughs) because I do, like, I just wasn't healthy. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Culture of Health podcast, where I interview my friend Alex, who is a husband, a father, and entrepreneur. And we talk about the balance of those three things while trying to improve his health. In this episode, he mentioned a few traumatic experiences that had a profound impact on his relationship with food today and how those experiences have led him down the path of not being as healthy as he would like to be. The truth is, this happens more often than not. And when you're juggling several things like Alex is, it's very easy for your health to slip through the cracks. And that's where it's important to have the proper health insurance coverage in place. For this, I recommend Access Benefit Consultants. Access is my parents' company, and they've been in the business of insuring people for over 30 years. Me personally, I consulted with Access when deciding on a plan that was best for my family, especially considering the fact that I don't have a W-2 job with benefits. Their agent gathered all of my family's information, and they came back to me with a quote in less than 24 hours. With the information provided, I was able to select a plan that worked best for our budget, And that gave us the amount of coverage that we needed to feel comfortable. Of course, taking care of our bodies is our number one priority in my household. But in case of a catastrophic event or when our kids do get sick, it's nice to know that we can go to the doctor and not have to worry about coming out of pocket an egregious amount of money for healthcare expenses that are covered by our health insurance. If you would like to have a safety net for yourself by way of having a health insurance plan, I highly suggest you reach out to Access by visiting accessbenefits.com. That's A-X-X-E-S-S benefits.com. You can visit their quote tool and have your insurance needs quoted immediately, or you can fill out a contact form and one of their agents will be in contact with you in no time. Again, that's accessbenefits.com. What's up, Alex? (laughs) What's up? What's up? What's up? (laughs) Why don't you go ahead and uh, just do like a, a brief introduction, man? Who are you? What are you about? You know what I'm saying? Give me the rundown. Gotcha. So as Austin mentioned, I'm Alex Lewis. I consider myself to be a serial entrepreneur with a focus in the area of creativity, um, using that as my vehicle to leave a legacy for my family. Um, when I say that, it's funny because I feel like all of my businesses, the same as serial entrepreneur, I've started so many businesses, a lot of them have failed, but they've all centered around creativity or branding of some sort. And so I realized that that's my vehicle. That's my purpose and passion. Um, I've also worked in the professional realm in the same area um, for six years in area of collegiate sports. And now I've recently transitioned to work with Anthony O'Neill and the neatness network to help build that brand um, as well as my own personally and my wife's as well. So um, that's a little bit about me. Serial, serial entrepreneur. All right, bet. So I want to get this kicked off one way. So I have several questions for you. Basically, what I want to do is I'm going to ask you what the current status of your health is. I'm going to ask you to rate it on a scale of 1 to 10 or 0 to 10. <laughs> and then um, I want us to kind of go through this journey of like how you got there just from like the beginning of your life all the way to where Alex Lewis is today. Let's just kind of like talk about how we got there. So question, what or how would you rate the current status of your health today? 1 out of 10. One out of ten? One. Uh, one, probably. Yeah. One out of ten. Break that down for me. Um, I just don't think health has been as much of a priority as it should have been for the past maybe well on and off for the past two years. Um, uh, I think I've let work and life and other things become a priority to where I just have not focused on my health, whether it be eating the wrong things, choosing to work out. Um, it's one of those things where I know what to do, but I kind of constantly choosing what's easy, unfortunately, and mm-hmm. that's not going to the gym or so, prioritizing eating healthy. Right. Because you can go to the gym and people still don't make progress depending on what happens at home and in the kitchen. But you said something important. You said that you weren't prioritizing your health because it seems like there were other things that were not just getting in the way, but took priority over your health. So 
let's say you're a one right now, but you were able to get other things in your life aligned. So was it worth it? Um, no, because <laughs> I think at a certain point <laughs> I was higher on that scale. I think uh-huh. I, I never have been. Let's just tell my wife this earlier today. I don't think I've ever reached my potential physically. I think I got mm. close maybe six years ago uh, when I was at maybe my physical peak in my life. But since then, I don't think I've ever been close. And I don't even think that was the apex. That was maybe a seven. I just lost a lot of weight and I was very slim, but I wasn't like, I hadn't got to like you, like that big muscular frame. And I had this big frame. I got to use it. So I haven't gotten to that place yet. Um, eating healthier. Yeah. But I think what, to answer your question, like what got in the way, is just like a lot of work and other things. And it just, and even though those things are important to try to get your finances and stuff with your relationships in order, um, I think there should have been more of a balance from my side, but I just pushed it aside and tried to focus on those areas. And now I'm feeling the ramifications of instead of being a five or a six, feeling like a one. So like you said, you're feeling the ramifications. What exactly does being a one feel like on a day to day basis for you? Um, I don't know if I could curse on this podcast, but to be honest, shit, go for it, man. Um, <laughs> kinda, it's kind of bad, man. To be honest, yeah. um, I feel like, I mean, even down to like my bowels just not being as tight as they used to be just because there are certain things. I feel like my body is just not breaking down food in the right way. Um, so I can just feel like some of the ramifications um, in a lot of different areas, even maybe even sexually or just other areas where it's like, dang, I should be have more energy like I did. Like, cause I'm like, I'm not even 30 yet. So I should have more energy in a lot of areas. And I felt like I find myself getting tired quicker and just so many things that I know my body should be better. If I was taking better care of it, that I'm starting to see kind of breaking down. I'm going to put you on the spot here, man. You said something that, that piqued my interest. You said you're not as good as you could be sexually. Yeah. As open as you can be without putting all your business out there. <laughs> yeah. What is like what, what does that look like? Because obviously you have something in your mind of what peak sexual performance looks like for you. And right. so now you must be measuring up. You, like you've got to be measuring that up against something. What is what what's what's lagging? You know what I'm saying? Um, I think two main things to answer that question. Number one is confidence in the bedroom. I think when you like Deion Sanders, you say when you look good, you feel good. So I think that com- that converts over to the bedroom. So I can remember being like at one of my physical peaks, just weightlifting while I was being really strong, being able to pick up my wife, throw her, do everything I want to do to her. Right. And not being able to do that now, it kind of affects things. You know, it makes sex a little boring for me because I can't do what I used to do. And it's like, okay, I can only. I'm hitting certain peaks. Like I can only put you here, do this. I can't do some of the crazy stuff I used to want to do. Right. So that's, that's limiting in itself, but also just like the stamina in sex, uh, the libido or just like getting gassed or not being able to follow through with certain movements for an extended period of time. Like you used to, um, you just start to see the ramifications of not working out and not doing certain things. And it's crazy. Cause I remember texting you, uh, a few months ago before I took this new job where I did start working out and immediately saw a boost in energy. Like we was turning up, like I just got done, turn up the round two. Sorry if you're watching this, Victoria, <laughs> but you know, that's just, I'm just seeing the benefits of it. But then going back to your first question, I just feel like sometimes other things get in the way and I'm like, eh, it's not a priority, but it should be. But dang, like what could be more important than sex? You're right. And I guess getting the money is sometimes, but I don't know, man. I got to get I gotta get my priorities in order, I guess. <laughs> but no, I can speak from experience. It's equally as hard to have good sex when you're unhealthy as it is when you're broke. <laughs> so, man. I don't know how. I've never had success with, I don't know. Let me not put Fantasia out there. She's definitely yeah. be listening to this. But uh, if, 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 if the funds, if the funds were low... It was just it, it, like she would never. It's just really hard mentally for women to get in the mood when they don't feel secure. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, for sure. Cool. So you checked off the security box, and then the physical fitness box kind of just like jumped off the cliff a little bit. But we're mm-hmm. gonna get that back, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Indeed, got to. <laughs> um, you just said that you were having issues with like you know sexual health, basically. And I brought up something very funny because last time we talked, you mentioned that you compare eating food to to uh, something else that mm-hmm. also kind of has something to do with sex. Yeah. Um, and you kind of related it to. I kind of want you to like to take me on that again, take me on that journey. Yeah. So I think for me, 
um, eating food sometimes can be like watching pornography or the benefits of it. Where you watch porn, you go through the act, and at the end, you're just really disgusted with yourself. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it just happens. Um, I think I told you the same story last time, but I mean, honestly, I can, I know we did it again this week where we like went to Zaxby's and got the food and it was, it was like, oh, we don't have Mark's like, I don't have time to cook. I'm tired, whatever. We're like we just resort to what we resort to. It's like, let's go get some fried food. And we do that. And you know, a part of me, the dopamine is excited to get the, the fried food and the chicken and eat the barbecue sauce and all this other stuff that comes with it. Right. But then after I eat it every single time, I'm like, what did I just do? <laughs> like, this is, this is disgusting. <laughs> like, this chicken probably ain't even real. So that's why I connected directly to porn. Yeah. So, yeah. That's very interesting because, like, there's got to be something. And this, the more similar thing between food and porn is that when we have an unhealthy addiction to either of them, it's something that we don't talk about. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. men aren't, we're not having these discussions. So the same way that somebody's health is deteriorating because they are not talking to someone about their food choices. Mm. It's just like how your sexual health can deteriorate or your addiction to pornography can um, turn to something that's out of control because men aren't having these discussions. Why? Mm. Oh, well, clearly you don't mind talking about it, but <laughs> why is it that, why do so many of us, men and women, like, why do you think that we hide these things? And like, like, is it shame? Is it is it guilt? Like, what is it that you feel or have felt that made you want to like not have those discussions? Um, I think it could be shame or guilt, but I think it's also that um, people are comfortable in like what they're doing, so they might not see it as a problem. Um, I know for me, like a lot of my relationship with food was passed down to me from my parents or my relationship, my mom. Cause I was raised in a single parent household with my mom. She worked a lot to raise me by herself. Not to say my dad wasn't around, but he wasn't necessarily in my life on a day to day. Um, so with that being said, she did a lot of things to help do that financially, similar to what I'm going through now, uh, to make, but that cost me and her as well, just on the health side. Um, with things we're putting in our body, what we're eating, a lot of fast food, McDonald's. Cause she was a principal. So when she used to get off work, uh, it was like, you know, baby, I'm tired. Like, what do you want to eat? And the choices were limitless. You know, you got McDonald's, Crystal's, Wendy's, whatever. And as a kid, like most kids, like that's a, that's a treat. But for me, I was like every day, like, yeah, we, okay. What do I want? <laughs> you know? And so that became an unhealthy habit to where now, I can, I know like every time me and my wife go on a trip to go from here to Birmingham or something to go home, like my brain automatically thinks, what are we going to eat? Whatever there is an accomplishment or something we do great at work and a business or, um, just personally is we're, how, how are we going to eat to celebrate? So there's just so many, <laughs> there's that unhealthy relationship with food where it's like yeah. the dopamine is like, yeah, buddy, like you did this. So you have to have some cake. You have to, cause it's like, it's just a train habit of what I've been passed, what's been passed down to me that was okay, so. By now you've heard a little bit of Alex's story and you might understand how important it is for entrepreneurs like him to be able to trust their gut. And that makes me wanna ask you, can you trust your gut? The truth is your gut isn't always as reliable as you'd like it to be, especially if you're not taking good care of it. And this is where I would like to talk to you about Super Gut. Super Guts Fiber Mix is one of the products that we use in our household to maintain good gut health by adding nine grams of prebiotic fiber to any of the meals that we're eating. We've added it to spaghetti, you can add it in oatmeal, you can add it to your rice. It doesn't have a taste, it won't change the texture of your meal, but you'll be automatically adding nine grams of prebiotic fiber to whatever dish you're eating at the moment. Adding more prebiotic fiber to your diet will help you build a more balanced gut by feeding the good bacteria and decreasing the population of the bad bacteria. You may notice that you have a more stable mood, clearer skin, better overall metabolic health, better pooping, and a host of other benefits that come with boosting your fiber intake. If you wanna trust your gut, I'm here for you. I support that. Just make sure that your gut is healthy enough for you to trust it. Again, one of the ways I like to do that is by using Super Guts Fiber Mix. And you can do the same thing by visiting supergut.com. You can try out their fiber mix, they have really good fiber bars and they have a really good fiber shake that mixes well with both water and milk. You can click the link in the show notes of this podcast or again, visit supergut.com. Speaking of things that I love to do to improve my health, 
One of the top three things that I do every single day is drink AG1 by Athletic Greens. One scoop of AG1 is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients. Gone are the days where I have to rummage through the pill cabinet looking for all the vitamins that I need to take for the day. Now, all I do is open the fridge, pull out my container of AG1, scoop it up into the shaker bottle, mix it up until it's dispersed well, and then enjoy it, knowing that I'm starting my day by taking ownership of my health. So if you want to take ownership of your health, today is a good time to start. Athletic Greens is offering you a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and five free travel packs to go along with your first purchase. To take advantage of that exclusive offer, you're going to go to athleticgreens.com slash TCHP. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash TCHP. Yeah. That's, that's cool because that's right at the intersection of culture and health, right? Like we yeah. have these things that we want to celebrate. Like, I mean, even if you go to, to school, I have kids in school. And if it's somebody's birthday, there is a high chance there's going to be cupcakes in there Man. for them to, to, to celebrate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or like you said, if there's an accomplishment, you know, especially as an adult, and you know, you're a single adult, you're going out mm-hmm. for drinks with the homies or... Uh, whatever the case is, that's a perfect mm-hmm. intersection of where culture meets health. Do you think that? Do you think that the culture that we've established is? Does it? How can I ask this? I want to say, is it worth it? But oh yeah, is it worth it? Like the celebration. Trying to find, trying to find a quote. No, I was actually trying to find a picture because, and I'll, I'll just send it to you so you can put it on the screen, but okay, this literally right. happened, what you're saying, to where, like, me and my wife have been trying to, we understand our relationship with food, and we're trying to work on that, but we're trying to guard our son from it, but I literally have a picture on my phone. We sent our son to, like, daycare, mother morning out, and it was another child's birthday, and that was the his first exposure to a cupcake, and so we oh. saw it on a picture because the, the lady that managed it sent it to us, and we were like, okay, well. <laughs> He got it now, so you know. Um, but that goes back to what you what you're saying. Though know? I just wanted to, I'll send you the picture so you can put it on the screen. But like, man, that was like one of those things where we're trying to manage that. But you know, some things like you were just saying, that, like you send your kids off, you can't control what they give them. So. Did you want to? Did you? Was there any part of you that wanted to text the person that manages the daycare and be like, "Hey, don't get it to my kid." <sighs> yeah, my wife did. Um, but, but did she? I think did she? I mean, it was too late at that point. We already had the picture. He was eating it, so we was like, "Just don't, don't take it out of his mouth." Obviously, but um, I think I think Victoria <laughs> talked to her afterwards about like what he could and what he couldn't have. But yeah. we slowly started exposing more him, him more to it. But um, we just want to limit that because it's just like, especially the sweets and stuff. Because we know that's like cocaine, really, like the sugar. Because I mean, that's one of my addictions. You say it's one of yours, so yeah. For sure. um, yeah. Is that is that like a deep seated like fear of yours, like for your child, knowing that knowing the current status of your health and knowing mm-hmm. the road that you were on to get to this point today, is that is that like something that's like I'm not letting this happen to my son? Yeah, one hundred percent. Because I just know how like my health affected me growing up in terms of like we just talked about sex, like with confidence and other things, and I think like the way my mom was feeding me was like determining so many outcomes in my life growing up, like. Like, obviously, like, I could have, like, said, you know, after this, I'm going to go work out or whatever. But, like, what kid is doing that? But, like, for me, it's like, because <laughs> um, I didn't have a father around. So, I didn't have a dad to say, okay, like, let's go work out together. Let me show you how to do this, that, and third. So, uh, for me, I want to show my son another way so that he cannot have to necessarily go through some of the roadblocks that I went through or trauma that I went through in life of just being, like, I was never, like, like, I'm, like I am right now, I feel like I'm the heaviest I've ever been. But growing up, I wasn't necessarily the heaviest. I I was always been tall, so I carried whatever I had well. So I wasn't like the biggest guy around or whatever the case may be. But everybody knew, like, you're like a tweener. Like, you between being fat and being skinny. Like, what you got? Like, shoes, brother, you know? So it's like, um, I don't want my son to have to go through that uh, in terms of, like, you know, being that tweener because of, like, the poor food choices that we're giving him. Because he doesn't choose that until he turns maybe 16 or 18, he gets a little money and can buy what he want to eat. But I uh, want to present him with better options and kind of train his taste buds before he gets old enough to decide. So Yeah, bro. Okay, so you just said something really crazy. You said that the food choice, your mom's food choices for you 
determine so many outcomes in your life. That's such a, that's a thing, right? Because when we think of food, we're not necessarily thinking about the future. We're not thinking about what we're going to become from the food we're eating, especially as parents and you're busy. Like, I try my best. Like, so, you know, we try to eat for stable blood sugar as much as we can in our home. And Mm. Fantasia, she's not feeling well right now. So she's got like a headache. So she's like off limits to the kids. So I'm the go-to person. So I'm like trying to get ready to hop on this podcast and get my kids situated. And my three-year-old is like, dad, I'm hungry. And normally I'm like, all right, eat a beef stick or eat some smoked salmon or eat the steak first. And then I'll let you have a snack, right? Like some oat bars or something like that. But I'm in a rush. And so I'm like, look, bro, you just going to be fed. (laughs) Here, here's this fig bar, which is so high in sugar, right? But I am low on time and I need something that's quick. And anytime you're low on time and you need something that's fast, it's going to be something that's more than likely highly processed, lots of sugar, uh, very low nutrient. um, Mm -hmm. It doesn't have many nutrients in it. And so I totally understand. And imagine if we continue to make decisions like that day in and day out, we don't think about how those foods contribute to like long term, really just long term anything. But I want to ask you, you said that your mom's choices contributed to so many different outcomes in your life. What are some of the outcomes that you can like put your fingers on right now and be like, I can relate that back to the food choices that my mom made while I was younger? Um, I mean, I don't want to go too deep, but I guess even my like my relationship with like women per se, because I just felt like I was like I said, I was like a tweener. So like when we were growing up, you know, most people in six, seven, eight grade, most of our like we're on smaller, we leaner, we just figure out our bodies and our frames. And so as somebody looked at as somebody who's like kind of like, oh, he's kind of chunky or bigger. Like I can I can remember like. Uh, my dad messed with me because like there was this girl he was trying to put me on that was like his associates daughter or whatever and she was like and this is like the trauma coming out she was like no i don't like him you know he kind of reminds me of a buttermilk biscuit now, you're gonna laugh but i'm just saying <laughs> 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 but it wasn't funny at the time you know what i'm saying because it's just like i didn't <laughs> Cause I do like, I just wasn't healthy and I didn't know how to fix. Well, I tried to fix it once because mm-hmm. I like, I was deliberately joining like the football team just so I was getting the workout class. But my mom watched one concussion documentary and pulled me straight out of there. So I couldn't <laughs> go to the workout class anymore. So that was messed up. But long story short, I do think my relationship with women was kind of like damaged at that point, mm-hmm. just because like every time, like, I was trying to approach a woman or something. And this is just like the high school days. Cause you know, I think there are like peaks of time where, in life where women look for certain things. So in high school, middle school, it's like the thugs or the athletes. Right. So when you like a fat, like I'm not selling drugs. So now I'm not athletic either. So now it's like two L's for me. Right. So <laughs> it's like, I can't do either one of those. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's, 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 that was the biggest issue with there. Cause now I'm overlooked. And so my relationship with women, was somewhat tarnished at that period. And so I think after that time, I grew resentful of women and wanting to like show them and certain things like that. Um, and it did work for me at one time where I did lose all the weight and I was like, I'm going to show all these, da, 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 you know, da, da, da. and it worked. <laughs> but the sure problem is I can't, I, I don't want to say that. I already cursed once on here, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, I just, I think that messed me up though internally because I did lose all that weight. I lost like, maybe 120 pounds at one summer I was eating healthy wow. and just vegetables like it was something crazy but at the same time I'll just send you those pictures too but at the same time I um I realized I gained all the weight back when I got with my wife now because I was doing it for somebody else mm. because if I was doing it for me then I would have kept working out and kept it up but I really was just trying to get to like okay I could post this picture to show you like this is mm. me at what was my best at the time um but what should have happened was I should have kept working on it and building on it. And maybe I look kind of like you right now, but I didn't. So I was doing it for somebody well, else. Dang. But you know what, though? I think that's OK. Like, I think that there are several things that motivate us to like into action. Right. And I think that mm-hmm. if that somebody else motivates you to action, like that turned out to be something that was really good for you, which is dope. I mean, what sucks is that you caught her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that was your that was your downfall. You, you, you asked her to marry you. She said, yeah. And he was like, all right. Bit. Yeah, I ain't gotta work out no more. Well, this was in college, but you're right because you know, you know, she cooks and stuff. So then she was cooking too. So I wasn't working out, and then she was cooking out his soul food and stuff, and you know, it just caught up with me. So <laughs> that's all right, man. We're still in the middle of your journey. So before I want to get back to you, <laughs> I want to get yeah. back to you. 
But I want to yeah. talk about your mom for a second. I want to make something very okay. clear. Your mom um, did the absolute best that she could. And I know I don't even know your mom. I haven't even met her yet. But I know 100%. she did because I have never met a, a woman with a child who wouldn't go to the end of the earth to, to do whatever she could to keep her child right. healthy and happy, right? Right. Um, and your mom did the best that she could with the knowledge that she had at the time. Exactly. Um, but looking back at it, like, have you and your mom ever had like a conversation about the, the food choices that she made for you? Somewhat. I mean, she didn't really agree. <laughs> she just like she said, I think she just sees it from the perspective that she did the best she could at the time. And then with her being kind of older, she just thinks that, you know, um, that's kind of just where that was. Like, it kind of is what it is. You make your own choices. Like, I gave you what I could give you based off the energy level that I had. And, you know. My whole point was, I think her, she said, my whole point was just to make sure you are fed. Like, you know yeah, what I'm saying? So, hear that a lot. Um, <laughs> so, um, but I think it goes back to what you were just saying about with your kids. Cause it's like we, me and my wife are trying to catch ourselves now. Cause we did that with our son where we exposed him to French fries early on. He's like one and a half now. And like now all he wants is French fries. So that's fried food over and over and over and over. Um, and so when we're weak or tired or busy, we kind of fall into that. Like, okay, buddy, we're going to get you them fries. But most of the time, now we're trying to transition him into like, okay, let's get you a baked potato. Let's yeah. get you, let's try to transition you into green peas and some other foods. So it's not just that, but I know for a period of time, especially when he was younger and he couldn't really tell us what he wanted. He was just crying and we didn't want to deal with that. Here's the fries. So I kind of <laughs> relate to my mom. But talking through this with you now, it's reminding me that like, I'm glad that we're making a transition away from that and noticing that so that we cannot make that a lifelong decision for him just to like go into that point. Uh, cause it's not going to, I don't want him to go through the same thing. So it's like, we got to right. make better choices now in the fundamental ages. Right. That's interesting because they say that kids, well, what is it's Um, it's a, a verse in the Bible that says, um, show a child in the way that he go, he'll never depart from there or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not going to quote it verbatim, <laughs> but let's say that's what it is. Right. Let's just mm -hmm. say that's what it is. Um, and that, is that true for you? Because your mom kind of showed you the way in which let's let's, let's modify the Bible verse and say, show a child the way that he should eat and he'll eat that way for the rest of his life. Is that is that a conclusion that you've arrived at for yourself? Hey, you guys, if you follow me on socials or any other platform, you guys know how much of a fan I am of continuous glucose monitoring and specifically doing it with levels. Levels is a software company that's building tech to help you see how food affects your health via continuous glucose monitoring. I've personally been monitoring my glucose for over a year, and still to this day, I'm learning more about how my body metabolizes food. Now, I don't know if you knew this or not, but your glucose is fluctuating all day, and it's primarily due to what you eat. If you can manage to improve your glucose based on the feedback that you're getting from the Levels app, you may notice that you'll have sharper memory, healthier weight, sustained energy, and a host of other benefits that come with keeping your glucose stable. When you sign up with Levels, you receive two sensors that last 14 days each. After applying the sensors to the back of your arm, you begin receiving instant feedback about how your diet and lifestyle are affecting your glucose levels. It's the ultimate level of accountability that's completely changed the way that I eat, and I think it would change the way that you eat too. So if you're ready to accept responsibility for your health and learn more about your body, I couldn't speak more highly about what Levels is building and how they're helping thousands of people see how food is affecting their health. Now, if that sounds like something that you could use in your life, I've dropped an affiliate link in the show notes of this podcast, and using that link, you'll receive two free additional months on top of your annual membership. If you use that link, I just ask that you do one thing. Keep me posted on your experience and tell me all the things that you're learning. I'd love to hear more about how Levels is helping you improve your health. Yeah, I think so. Um, just because I think some of the trauma and experiences with food or my relationship with food has transitioned to um, at least my 20s because I'm not even 30 yet. So even like a story I shared with you last time where like I think my relationship with food from just finishing my food or finishing it fast or overeating as a result of one incident where I got a whooping for not finishing my plate. We were at like an all you can eat restaurant. And so. Like, I think now it's like now every time I get a bag of candy or every time I get something like I try to scoff it down because it takes me back to that moment where it was like, you better finish that food. And I'm like, no, nah. and now I get a whooping for it. So, yeah, it's just I think that that, that has carried over for sure. 
I think that's interesting, man. I've read some um, compelling research that links trauma to, you know, nutritional deficiencies um, or just really just poor diet in general. And something so small like that where you get spanked for not finishing your food at a buffet, which takes it to a whole nother level. <laughs> yeah, that That's something that, I mean, it, it really sticks with you, man. I think I, I, um, I told you, like, when I was younger, my parents spanked me for walking around the block. And even as an adult, fully, I'm, I'm grown. I can handle myself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but <laughs> I walk around the block today, and I'm still like, man, did I, did I tell my mom I was walking around the block? <laughs> I'm a, th- a 31-year-old man <laughs> looking for permission. But no, like that's that lends more credibility to like just as harmful as that experience was for you and your current eating habits today. That same level of attention, except flip to the reverse, right? Where you let's say you praise your son Ace for not finishing his food, right? For for getting to a three quarters of the way through his plate, and you're like, "Hey, are you done?" And celebrating the fact that he recognized when he was full mm-hmm. and stopped eating his food, like stuff like that, the negative trauma that we experience um, can not easily be replaced by, but especially when you're looking at generational trauma, like these are things that you have control over. And mm-hmm. I think that, well, I don't know, let me ask, is that something that is a primary objective for you and Victoria as you guys are like raising ace? Are you guys trying to? reverse some of the experiences that you had as a child yes uh actually kind of similar to what you were just saying so when ace does finish his food like we start this thing where he tells us well she tries to teach him sign language or something i don't know if this is the right thing but she tells him like are you all done and then because we know when he's done now because he just throws the food on the floor or whatever <laughs> but for the most part for the most part we just uh he says we he tells us he's done we clap to let him know like we're glad you recognize that you're finished versus like saying like and it doesn't get frustrating for my wife where it's like, dang, I done made you all this food and you only want this much of it. But I have to remind her, like, hey, you know, there's a trauma I went through. We don't need to do that. And she's like, okay, cool. So we start the clapping thing so we can like make it a happy thing and say, okay, you're done eating. Great. Yeah. Um, it's not you're eating just because you see it. Because I have started to see in some ways with some of the food that we were giving him earlier, it's like fries and stuff like that. Like he'll just eat it just because it's in front of him. He's not going to just stop because it's like, I'm full. It's like, no, I love these fries, Dad. I'm going to keep eating them. So I was like, yeah, we got to kind of check that because he's like one and a half. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I think before, I don't think there's anything to forgot about now. My kids, mm-hmm. as much as we try our best to feed them healthy food, our young child, he's, all he wants is carbs. Fries, <laughs> chips, pretzels. Like, he doesn't care mm-hmm. anything about protein. Definitely doesn't want vegetables. Um, we find ways to give it to him. But but that's normal. Like, that's normal for kids. Like, they will. Yeah. It's almost like they don't want to do the right thing. Their palate has been, I don't know, I guess they just, they want that hyper palatable food that's going to taste good and make them feel good. And we're not even talking about kids. Like, shoot, (laughs) let's talk about adults. Yeah, I I do the same thing. Yeah. So the same way you're rewiring your son's experience with food, what's the likelihood that you can do that for yourself? I think it's very likely. Um, I don't know how long it would take, but <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working yeah. on it for sure. At least AC starting off with a clean slate. You got you got 20 yeah. years of, yeah. of stuff to reverse. But what's the first step, man? I think that, you know, <clears throat> the point, the reason why I want to, like, have these conversations is I want to unearth all mm-hmm. the different things that contributed to, like, your relationship with food and to highlight how all that is rooted in culture. Like, mm-hmm. your mom working as a single mom or you not having your dad around all of these things are a result of culture you know yeah. um so that being said how can you i'm challenging you with this question how can you start today to create a new culture of health that your body would benefit from and one that you can continue to um perpetuate like with your with your family mm. um i think just being open minded to try different variations of food like healthier options i guess i could say um i know i used to be so like kind of like my mom is now like we try to introduce her to healthy food she's kind of the same way as i was when i first started but when my wife first started to introduce healthier foods like 
I used to love spaghetti, obviously pasta, not necessarily good for you. You consume it at a high value. And she's like, okay, you like spaghetti. Let's try zucchini spaghetti. I'm like, zucchini spaghetti. I'm like that's not spaghetti. <laughs> and, um, I can remember trying it for the first time and it wasn't great. But I, at that time I was like, okay, let me try this to, with an open mind to see like if it's at least palatable instead of like thinking like, what's the great taste in food we used to eat? Cause I know that's not necessarily good for me. And over time I've started to like it. Um, and including other things like some of these green smoothies and some of the other things that she would make, um, from scratch that sometimes tastes different than the box version or the unhealthier version. Um, yep. but it's like, like I said, shifting those taste buds and knowing that it's not going to be like, Oh, this tastes amazing. <laughs> it's just going to taste kind of good enough. <laughs> uh, yeah. so that, um, I kind of get what I want, but not like necessarily in the overwhelming fashion that I might have gotten it from the unhealthy versions of those foods. So I think having an open mindedness towards that. And then I think being more disciplined when I'm out, because like you said, we're both grown men. So in, we have money. So it's easy to just say when I'm out driving for me, going past the gas station or something that I used to like, cause dope, the kind of my brain tricks with dopamine. Like, okay, we, we used to love ices, Alex. Like it's almost like, have you ever seen the movie Venom? I feel like that's what my relationship with food is. Like when when he talks to me, like it's like, well, Alex, we're passing by <laughs> the gas station. Um, <laughs> we love we love ices. Like let's go get one. <laughs> and I feel like I have to fight him like all the time because it's like <laughs> it's like a fat <laughs> it's like a fat Venom in my head. Like and that's funny. On the movie Venom, does like eating, but it's the same thing. <laughs> with the ices and the candy, the cookies. Like, I feel like I'm constantly like at war with myself. And so I think it's just the constant dedication to fight. Um, I guess that inner villain of just, that just wants to eat all these things that it's used to being fed. Um, mm -hmm. and so it's almost, like I said, it's almost similar to that character. I tried to make a joke, but it really like that. Honestly. <laughs> That's very interesting. Guys. Like, I wonder like, I think all of us, we have an inner venom, right? That's telling mm -hmm. them, like, I, don't, I can't do the voice like you just did. But <laughs> <laughs> we all have that inner venom that's like, yo. And, and for some people, it's not food. And I think that's what makes that's what makes me so compassionate. Because although that's not my, like, I don't have a venom in my ear telling me to go eat Skittles. Because, mm -hmm. I don't know, I tell myself to eat Skittles. <laughs> like, the, the, the real me. <laughs> And, but because I do all the other things to compensate for me enjoying that bag of Skittles from time to time. Right, right, right. Um, but to me, it may be something like, oh, don't don't open your bank account. Just spend money. Don't <laughs> don't check your finances. Or, yeah, just yeah. go sit down. Like, we all have that voice. And some yeah. people, it's stronger for them in that food area because they have that emotional like connection. Like, when you taste mm -hmm. like certain food, like you said, when that dopamine hits, it's like, mm, I personally, I don't get much of a, a dopamine rush from eating food. No, 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 no. Okay. Omen raisin cookies, Skittles, and like ice cream with caramel, like chocolate chunks. Man. And that's it. I mean, I could eat that for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. But for the most part, like the, the foods that don't seem as bad, but still contribute to poor metabolic health, like a diet that consists of highly processed foods or you know, yams. Like, okay, yams are vegetables, right? But then you know how we prepare yams. You go and dump a bunch of sugar in them things, and then sweet potatoes turn into, you know, sugar with a side of sweet potatoes. And then you got, you know, other things that we um, eat and drink and don't seem as bad when we eat them, but they give us that dopamine rush. And then it takes, you know, 5, 10, 15 years for us to see how they truly like, manifest into, like, I don't know, it's a poor metabolic health. But that's why I feel yeah. so compassionate, like not just to you, but to anybody who struggles with eating the right food because it's 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 so deep. Like it, it goes so much deeper than like, well, Alex, just say no. And well, Alex, just go to the gym. Like it's I wish that worked. Why doesn't it work, Alex? Maybe I should ask you that. Um I think it goes back to what I said earlier. I think I just gotta choose to do it for myself. Like, I don't think mm -hmm. I'm, I'm at that. I'm not even, I think I'm at that point now. So it's just choosing to do it for me. Um, and then, like I said, from a legacy standpoint, obviously I'm utilizing my creativity, but physically I want to pass down a healthy legacy to my son. That's not just from, um, 
what food he chooses or what we're choosing to give him. But I want him to see physically like the benefits of that, because obviously it does trickle trickle in other areas. So, you know, if if I'm not taking care of myself, my wife isn't taking care of herself, then that's going to affect our intimacy. It's going to affect our attractiveness. It's going to affect other things. And then, you know, God forbid that affects us from a divorce standpoint. So I just think health like affects so many areas that, you know, we don't even realize when you're going through it, when you are prioritizing finances or whatever else might be going on that um, we kind of just have to choose to prioritize uh, for ourselves and for our kids and spouses and things of that nature. So making it a high priority. Man, did you say poor health could contribute to divorce? I think so. Yeah. That's it's fascinating. Fun. It's funny. Uh, I don't know. Well, he's not going to watch this. I don't think so. I can put it out there, but I remember I talked to like my spiritual mentor. He gave me uh he might watch it. Austin. Let me change. You might watch this. It. It's going to blow up, buddy. Uh, but I'm just saying he's, he's in his little cocoon in, in, in Arkansas. So now he's not definitely going to know I'm talking about him, but I can remember him asking me at one point when um, he's like, he was the one that gave us like our biblical guidance when we were getting married, AKA marriage counseling. Um, after Victoria had the baby, I was telling him, well, you know, I'm trying to like, get us back in order. Like we need to I think we need to work out and stuff like that. Some of the topics that we're talking about. And he was asking me, he was like, yeah. So, you know, she just had the baby. Like, is she unattractive to you? Like, is that something that you're going through mentally? And that's something I never like thought of out loud. Um, I'm like, dang, like mm-hmm. maybe he's right. Like, cause, cause for me, like in marriage, I'm like, I accept you as you are, but I think sometimes we do a lot of that just to say what sounds good. But in reality, I think as partners, we have to work together to do what's good for the marriage and prioritize our health and things of that nature. So um, I thought that question was like kind of enlightening just so I I can remember, like, it's okay to be honest with your partner if that's a problem and the mm-hmm. same and vice versa, because he's we've had that conversation. So it's like, you know, like, hey, we, we need to do better so that we can pour right. into each other in that way because the last thing you need is like oh well i'm not that interested or oh it affects your intimacy or like oh the attractiveness is not there just because you know we just focused on money and other things outside of that and now yeah we rich but you know and but we, we we're we're not we don't like each other anymore so <laughs> last thing, last thing you need <laughs> that's so refreshing to hear man because i think that another reason why we want to continue to have this conversation about culture because I think that there needs to be some sort of correction with the culture uh, where yeah. I, right now we're seeing that people are prioritizing money over health. And I don't mean, well, what you see is a lot of people, um, you know, when they put their list of requirements when they're looking for a mate, one of the top things, well, number one thing always is financial stability. And not mm-hmm. to say that that's not important, that is important. But when you put financial stability over like, your own personal health and wellness, eventually, like you, you can have all the things that money can buy, but if you don't feel good and you're not attracted to the person that you're with, then this empire that you built with is not on sustainable ground. And so I will go as far as to say that good health needs to be the foundation that everyone builds their uh, relationship on outside of, like, yeah. you know, whatever your faith is, um, your the foundation of your relationship has to be built with like with good health. And I think that anybody I can humbly say that anybody who's has a relationship that is built on shaky ground or if your health is not in the right order, then it does leave gaps for, you know, just just all the things, man. Like, shoot, especially when we start talking about like infidelity and stuff. Like, man, if you're not completely attracted to the person that you're with because of, you know, things that are downstream for health, then it just opens you up to, yeah, it just opens the door for a whole bunch of stuff. And we see that often. Totally agree. Um, We see uh, that divorce rates are high. I don't think it's a coincidence that divorce rates are elevated um, and that we're also seeing that the majority of our population is experiencing health complications because these things like impact your brain, impact your sexual health impacts your uh, how you basically how you see the world so yeah. as the person who's so passionate about health i will i will die on the hill that uh good health is at the root of all the abundance and purpose in life that everybody is looking for that's my opinion, sure. way. i just want to follow that up because i think i'll go back to the point i made earlier with that i think it's also i've had self self-awareness to realize that 
my relationship with my health being out of order has affected. It does affect the way you look at your spouse. But in reality, if you take a look in the mirror and realize that you have, a, I've had a lack of confidence in myself because I've had a bad relationship with the gym and with food. And that's now being deflected to my partner. Now, if she was, if we were both working out, then maybe that'd be different. But I think at times we can look at our partner and say, oh, well, you're not doing this, that, and the third. But it's crazy because when you look in the mirror, then you see something different. It's like, oh, damn, like I'm not doing it either, dog. Like maybe, like I'm really just deflecting with how I feel about myself on her. And that's, and that's not fair. So I think, like you said, it's, it's more of, it's a relational thing, but I think individually we have to do that homework ourselves. And that's what I'm realizing. I literally told my wife that like this morning, like, I think I have to do better job at like, I think a lot of things I may have been thinking or saying, or me just deflecting because I'm not happy with myself right now because I need to prioritize my own health um, and get that in order. So yeah, it does. Well, you said it, not me, you said it. So that means (laughs) again, it's something that needs to be done. So one of the things that I want to do with this podcast, each of the people that I have on, um, especially when we have conversations like this, I want to challenge you uh, not 90 days, because that's, you know, it's kind of a short period of time, but 120 yeah. days, man. That's, that's, that's four months. Mm-hmm. That's a little bit more than a quarter of a year. Um, I want to follow up with you and on the podcast and basically revisit this conversation. And what mm-hmm. comes out of it is going to be good no matter what. Whether you, you know, completely change your life in four months or you, you know, find yourself, <laughs> or you find yourself in the same place. Yeah, like, <laughs> man, like, bro, I tell people all the time, it took me six years to figure out how to be consistent before I did it. So all the really? stops and st- yeah, absolutely. All the starting, man, I started to stop so many times, bro, between the ages of 19 and 26. Like I would put on muscle man. I would lose on my weight and do it again. Like I was back and forth in and out of the gym until wow. I turned 26. I don't even know what happened. Well, I do know what happened. We had a really big business failure. We could talk about that. But, you know, that's a whole nother conversation in itself. Um, yeah. But that was my moment. My, my like, okay, yeah. I got to get my shit together. And yeah. that's what pushed me in that direction. So I, I personally believe that anybody who hasn't like, had the ability to completely prioritize your health and do the things, they haven't had that, I got to get my shit together moment. And yeah. I think that, you know what I'm saying, it sounds like you've had it. Yeah. But the next time we follow up, we'll prove whether or not you, you have it. So I'm going to set the, the clock for, what is that, February or something like that. And mm-hmm. um. I'm going to invite you back to the podcast and we're going to follow up. This is like a brief episode just to kind of see where you are. I'm sure people want to know. Man, remember that, that person I also talked to, uh, Alex? Yeah, I wonder if he may, I wonder if he's picking his wife up again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I hope so, man. That, that'll be dope in February. Um, but I did have a moment like that too, Austin, since we last spoke, like where I had a classmate actually pass away. And I think it was from health complications. He has kind of always oh. been like a a larger person like um so i think it was related to health complications but it's crazy it's like he's just just gonna turn 30 and so mm. i was like wow so for me it was like okay like <laughs> we gotta get I'm this together gonna... buddy like i said we we carry it better because we, we like six two or something like that but no we can't just look <laughs> look okay and not be okay because you know that's a because I don't want to, I don't want to have health complications, especially not this early. You know, I got a son, so yeah. um, it's too early. Got to get it in order. So I think that was a bit of a that was a surprise. Wake up call. Good. Yeah. Good. We all need wake up calls every now and then. So we will follow up. Um, shoot, man. If you're watching this podcast and you have any questions for Alex, Alex, where can people DM you to to ask you questions? <laughs> oh man, you can send them to my DMs. Uh, yeah, just. just Come to my Instagram. It's Mr. Mr. Alex Lewis on Instagram, on Twitter too. Uh, actually on YouTube as well, but for DMs, just come to Instagram and I guess we'll talk. <laughs> yeah. And Alex, um, I hope you're okay with me saying this, but I know that you have plans on documenting a lot of this journey on your YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Um, not just your health, but just a whole bunch of things that you're working on building. And I yeah. think that if you're listening to this, I think that it's a good opportunity to follow someone along their journey when they make the commitment so you can see how it goes and maybe it may inspire you to make some changes along the way so um, mr alex lewis on youtube as well mm-hmm. beautiful yep. all right well ladies and gentlemen that is the episode thanks so much for tuning in 
Uh, my name is Austin, again, your host. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, we have several more in the pipeline coming through. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. Um, and shoot, I don't know, I got nothing left to say. Have a good day. <laughs> Peace. All right, all right, all right, all right.